What's an amplifier's slew rate? This question comes from Scott in Baker's Patch. Oh, Baker's Field, California. Paul, can you please describe an amplifier's slew rate? What's happening electronically, and why does a higher slew rate usually make the amplifier sound? More better, natural, detailed, and effortless in the higher frequencies. Um, that's a really good question. Let's see if I can explain it hmm, without uh, getting too technical, because I don't like getting too technical. Um, oh, I'm sitting at, at Darren Meyer's desk, and, and look at these beauties. These are the prototype cabinets for the Sprout speaker, and here's the beautiful little driver. Isn't that guy cool? Carbon fiber. Looks really nice, that guy goes in here, and it's gonna have a little grill on it, and then the ribbon tweeter goes in. Here's the, uh, there's the little grill. Isn't that nice? That's gonna be a sweet little package. My son Scott came up with the aesthetics for this thing and put this beautiful aluminum trim ring around it. I don't know how the hell the company did that, but anyway, what were we talking about? Slew rate, slew rate, slew rate. Slew rate is the ability of a amplifier to go from one state to another and the time it takes to get there. So it's usually done in volts per microsecond. And uh, so let me see if I can, how can I explain that? So, uh, and it's particularly important in amplifiers because we have much farther to go. So in a preamplifier, we're probably producing signals in the order of two to three volts max, because the input voltage of a power amplifier, uh, usually like 1.8 volts, two volts, 2.2 or so, uh, once you hit that level of voltage on the input of a power amplifier, you're getting close to clipping its output, okay? It's got a gain of about 30, 28 or 30 or so. And, and so, a preamplifier is, is trying to go from zero up to the maximum of about two volts. So it can do that fairly quickly relative to one that, say, had to go to 10 times higher voltage, right? But we still don't want the amplifier to slew. So what does that mean? So imagine a musical waveform, if, if we can picture a musical waveform, it's, 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 it's voltage going up and down, up and down, right? And if I, uh, what do I got to bang here? Let's see, I don't know. Every time I bang that, there is, and if I were to look at that on the scope, you would, you would see this, you know, background noise and all of a sudden, wang! There would, and it, and it takes a certain amount of time depending on the frequency of that bang, right? So I don't know what that frequency is, but whatever it is, we're going from zero to a very quick bang, right? The job of the amplifier is to perfectly follow that incoming waveform, right? So you've got a little one coming in and it's going from down here and then it's going real quick. Now at the output, I want this to look like this. And if this goes up this quick, then this has to go up that quick and follow. If it doesn't, if it goes slower, we call that slewing. And it's kind of rolling off the transient. And in order to do that, your amplifier should be 10, 100 times faster slew rate than what is required by the input frequency. So we don't care a whole lot over say 50 kilohertz, 40 kilohertz in order to get all the phase angles and everything correct for our 20 kilohertz uh, incoming waveform. So in order to do that, we have to be able to slew. We have to go from zero up to a fairly high voltage, well, relatively high to the input signal, um, as quickly as the input signal can move and, and actually more quickly uh, because we don't want to cause any distortion. A power amplifier has the exact same requirement, except that it's going from a very, you know, one or two volts 
up to 40, 50, sometimes 60 volts. We're usually stuck around 40 volts or so. That's a lot of voltage to, for a device to jump from essentially zero up to 40 volts and then back down again. So slew rate in an amplifier is very important. When I first designed PS Audio's Phono Preamplifier, the very first one that Stan heard said, wow, that sounds great. Do you want to form a company with me? And it became Paul and Stan Audio, right? Well, I had designed this preamplifier and I had built this phono stage around a mistake. The original circuit, which was designed by Walter Jung um, in a book called the Op Amp Cookbook, I had lifted his circuit out of there and it called for a 741 op amp. And I couldn't find 741 op amps. This was years and years ago. So I had a friend of mine who gave me a 709 op amp, okay? Uh, I, at the time, didn't have a clue what the difference was. And I stuck that 709 in there. And I copied his circuit. And I added a few tweaks of my, my own, put it in a box with a couple of 9-volt batteries. And, and Stan heard it, flipped out, and said, wow, we got to sell these to audiophiles. And PS Audio was, was formed. That was in 1974. Later, when we were tweaking and trying to figure out, well, you know, what level can we take this to, I thought, hey, you know, Walt Jung's original schematic called for a 741 op amp. And those were uh, everywhere back then. It was the, the op amp of choice. The 741 was unconditionally stable. It was, th these were integrated circuits. You could buy them off the shelf. They're little, you know, eight-legged spidery things, that little piece of plastic with four legs on each side. And there's a complete amplifier. And you plug that into a socket and boom. So I could, I had sockets on this thing, and mine had the 709, and the 709 has the same pinout and the same package as a 741. Op amps generally have the same pinout, so you can pop one in and pop another in. So you know, I didn't know anything about slew rates and all that at the time, and we popped in the 747. Ah, oh my God, it sounded horrible. It was like, whoop, oh, I'm exaggerating here. It's whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, it was just dull and, and oh, sl Here's something interesting to think about. If I had found the right part, the 747 that Jung had put in there, and built my phono preamp fire, brought it over to Stan Warren's house and listened to it, he would have said, eh, it's not as good as my Dynaco Pat 4, but I'm sure it's okay for your radio station. Have a nice life. There would be no PS audio. None. The fact that I used the wrong op amp, a 709, which by the way, and you'll see where I'm getting around to this thing and this big mystery here, has a very high slew rate uh, compared to a 741, made all the difference in the world. The, the 741 is a slug. I don't remember, but it's, it's like, oh God, what was it like? I don't know, 10 volts per microsecond or some, some ridiculous, I, I don't remember what it was. Uh, I really don't. But the 709 was light years faster, uh, higher slew rate than a 741. And that made all the difference in the world. And as I said, PS Audio wouldn't exist 50-something years later, or 45, whenever it is, if I hadn't made that mistake. And that was all based on slew rate. So you think about that. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow.